Our next veteran served in three wars during his service of nearly three decades. To this day, his fingers remember the numbness he felt from the bitter cold weather in Korea. I got with my pals, we decided we would go ahead and join the service, so we chose the Marine Corps. We went and talked to the recruiters in, uh, in Wilkes-Barre and uh, liked what we saw and decided to join us and go to serve our country. Robert Buck Rogers had to get parental consent. He was only 16 when he signed up for the Marine Corps. Eventually, his friends would move on, but for Rogers, it became a 29-year commitment beginning with World War II. After boot camp, then I was stationed at Quantico, Virginia, which is outside of Washington. That's, that's where I trained uh, as an aircraft mechanic, and I became a crew chief on the transport aircraft. During the tail end of World War II, Rogers served domestically, flying troops and supplies around the United States. It was his next assignment, which would take him abroad. I went to Korea in 1950, which is right at the beginning of the Korean War. Of course, during that period, nobody knew where Korea was, or on the map, or anything else. Rogers' responsibilities were the same in Korea, flying supplies and troops to different areas. He would also bring back the wounded, or KIAs, those killed in action. Korea was just a desolate area that was just cold. And that's the only thing it was. And that was one of the biggest casualties was frostbite and trying to work in the cold. And to this day, my fingertips are still numb uh, whenever it gets cold. I just have no feeling in the tips of my fingers from the cold weather that was there. It was just dusty and dirty and uh, in the wintertime, you had snow that was knee-deep. Troops on the ground, they had a very difficult time with the cold. They had what they called the Mickey Mouse boot, which was a uh, insulated boot that you wore, plus parkas, and try to stay as warm as you could. In the evenings, Roger's plane would drop flares. We'd be dropping flares for the night fighters. Go ahead and destroy the movement of the troops on the ground. They were dropped out of the air. They had a lanyard which went ahead and ignited the flare. They were 1,500 candle power, which would light up the area pretty good. We would get the word from up front that it needed three flares at 30 second intervals, and so we would drop the flares at that particular interval if they wanted them. It was hard to count how many times Roger's plane was shot at. They were pretty close, they were pretty loud, so you know they were pretty close. We were shot at from the ground up. Of course, that's where I got my commendation medal for dropping the flares at night uh, for, the, for the night fighters. Rogers received six air medals. Do your job and do what you had to do. It's just uh, do the best of your ability. When it came to defending themselves, Rogers says they didn't have much protection during the Korean War. The only arm we had was a 45 pistol that we carried with us in the airplane. And we had, of course, we had a submachine gun in the back of the airplane if ever we went down. Most striking, there were no ear protectors at that time. That's the reason I think that most of my hearing is bad is because of the, the jet engines and the reciprocating engines that we worked on without wearing protectors. Through the changes and challenges, Rogers didn't forget his family and friends back home. I can remember during the Depression when I was growing up, uh, how my my father struggled in order to go ahead and provide for the family. And uh, when I was over in Korea, I would keep only a small portion of my, my paycheck and send all the rest of it back home. At the end of the war, Rogers made it back home with one minor injury to his knee. I was on the, on the wing of the airplane and I slipped off the wing and went down to the ground. Years later, he went to Vietnam. Vietnam was more intense than Korea was. We actually had two airplanes that we lost in Vietnam. In Korea, uh, we didn't lose any airplanes. We've seen more casualties in Vietnam than we did, we did actually see in Korea. But this time, Rogers and the other Marines had more protection. In uh, Vietnam, they had the, 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 vet, the armored vest. And, and even in the airplanes, they started uh, armor plating underneath the helicopters in the back seats for the pilots. And, uh, Whereas in Korea, we never had that. Finally, after serving in three wars, Rogers retired in 1974. 
had left my family enough and I wanted to go ahead and stay with my family. Today, Rogers works with veterans associations, making sure not one veteran is left behind when it comes to getting the benefits they deserve. Still ahead, a Garden Grove man became a local hero after serving in Iraq. What split-second decision saved lives and earned him the highest military distinction?